Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hi, I'm Josh Collins. And I'm Carolyn Birchall. Welcome to Conference Hacks. This is the show where we uncover everything you need to know to maximize your investment in any conference you attend and the art of hacking a conference. In this episode, we're gonna cover how to choose the right conference for maximum impact. So Carolyn, one of the first conferences that we wanna cover or conference types is public conferences. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, as the name suggests, open to the public. So generally they're retail things. So it could be around cars or boats or health or that type of thing. Sometimes there may be a entry free, sometimes not. Often mm. there isn't because people will be spending a lot of money when they're actually right. in, in the event itself. Mm. But uh, it's, so the people that exhibit at that kind of event are people that generally retail to the public. Right, okay. So. The major difference between that and the, the second conference type is exhibitions. Yes. So what are the major differences between the two? So exhibitions are usually suppliers that are selling to wholesalers. Right. And so the wholesalers are attending an exhibition or a trade fair because they want to look for suppliers, look for products that they want to sell in either their own retail outlets or that they want to then on sell to other retail outlets. Right. So generally in an exhibition type or trade fair, there's not usually speakers. Okay. It's more just your acres and acres of products that you yep. that you yep. look at. So less so content and more exhibition. That's exactly right. Right. Okay. So um, virtual conferences are something that's quite new to the conferencing environment. Yes. But Tell us about that and you know why would you attend or what's the, the major difference between that I and think other conferences? A, a lot of um, conference organisers are now, you know, they're, obviously people can be quite time poor. Right. And so if a conference can allow itself to be done virtually, yeah. meaning that you would be literally sitting in your office, as will hundreds of thousands of other people, yeah. watching it on your yeah. desktop or your laptop or, or that type of thing. Yeah. And that is obviously an information only. Yeah. So it'd be... Uh, if there's a forum for that, I've been to some and, and it runs over a whole day. Yeah. And uh, and they have breaks and things yeah. like that. But it makes it really easy because other than the time that you're investing, yeah. there's no cost to get yeah. to the venue or anything like that. So, yeah. Yes. And I guess as well that some of the speakers that they can get to virtual conferences are a lot more... Um, I would say influential in the yes. industry. Yes, actually that's a really valid point because it's much easier for them because often yep. the speakers are in their own location as exactly. well. They don't have to bring them in. Right. And that's totally different from the convention model, which yes. is our next one. Um, yes. So tell us about conventions, why and what's the difference? So conventions are usually around a particular topic. Yep. So you think of sort of medical conventions right. or uh, comic conventions mm -hmm. or, or that type it's of like thing. Comic -Con like Comic-Con or... Yes, like... it's got a theme to it. Right. And you will have speakers, often um, the, all the topics and the speakers, they're, they're all related to a particular theme that mm. will be happening that year. Mm. Um, and whether it's education, mm that they need to, like say for medical, mm. they would be educating perhaps mm. uh, doctors or suppliers about new products mm. or new techniques or, or that type of thing. So it's quite specialised. Mm. You would really only be going to that convention if that was your industry. Right. So I think when we kind of move over into the planning side of that, yes. um, what are the next steps um, in terms of you, you've, you've determined what type of industry conference you want to go to. Yes. What happens from there? So for us, um, I've done this a few times now. I think I've done it like seven times. Right. And we've got it down to pretty much a fine art. Right. Okay. So if we're looking at, for Bryn, what conferences we want to, to do over the next year, yeah. we basically, initially, we spreadsheet it. So okay. I put a brief together for one of our team members mm -hmm. to literally go through and Google and look at all the different conferences around that we would be interested in. Mm -hmm. And so literally typing 
the name of the conference, the date, who's organising it, the website, right. if they know what the cost is, because often it's displayed mm. on the on the website, um, the location, meaning what country it's in, mm -hmm. the city it's in, mm -hmm. and that type of thing. And also putting some notes on why they think that we should attend that conference. Yeah. And so on that list, you might end up with 15 or, or 20, yep. 30, even more conferences that you go, right, these are the conferences that are coming up over the next year. Then you need to start breaking that down mm -hmm. and going back to one of our previous episodes on why you're attending the conference. Yes. So we gave seven reasons, yep. but when you're actually going to decide on a conference, you really should only be picking one or two main reasons, three at the very most on why you're going because you want to be really focused. Yep. So based on once you know your why, then it can help you take those 15, 20 conferences on your spreadsheet and really narrow it down to about three or four. Mm. Then you have to look at that, who in your business is going to be attending those conferences. Mm -hmm. So you need to then look at your calendar yeah. of all your employees mm -hmm. when you decide who's going and seeing, well, who can attend that. Mm. Then the next layer you need to do is you go, okay, I've highlighted these three or four. What are the costs? So if that conference is going over three or four days, you've got to look at flights, you've got to look at accommodation, you've got to That's look at food, yeah. you know, and all the stuff that you want to take over. Is that a lot? Do you need to ship it in advance? Mm -hmm. So you need to get not exact figures, but ballpark figures of what yeah. that's going to cost and put that in a spreadsheet as yeah. well. Yeah. The other thing that's really important though is leave space for ad hoc conferences because mm -hmm. sometimes they just pop up. Yeah, that's a huge thing, right? Right, and you want to take, like, I'm going to one tomorrow that we only found out last week. Yeah, right. And we've had to, you know, do a really quick turnaround and prepare ourselves, okay. but we just feel it's that important. And yeah. that happens sometimes, ones will come up. So you just need to make sure that when you're budgeting mm. for your conferences that you want to attend over a year, that you do leave some money back for the ad hoc ones. Mm. You may have some, you may not, but at mm. least you've, you've got it there ready. And Going back to your first point there a little bit, if you're a small business yes. and you don't have a lot of time to comb through 20, 30, 40 yes. different conferences um, and actually take those notes and then do some sort of critical analysis on which ones should I attend, what do you recommend if you're time poor, if you've got an hour and you need to make a decision on the next you know, six months uh, of events you're, you're going to attend? Now, you probably, in all cases, I wouldn't recommend doing that as a, as a conference no. organiser, but what do you do if that's the, the type of thing? Look, I think there's a couple of things that you can do there. Like if you are a startup and you might be a one-man band mm. or a two-man band and, and you just don't have time to do that mm. level of detail, there's probably two things that I would recommend. To continue enjoying this presentation, download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today.